for everyone concerned in the comments, I got you. I'm gonna replace it. I already like pulled out the thing, but I need to take this out and replace it. Thanks for the concern, everyone. It's now changed. Hi everyone, it's Shora, I'm back, and did you like that intro? It was inspired by Stranger Things. And I am back with another crochet vlog that talks about act two of my collection that I made last year called Dark Night of the Soul, which you can check out on my website. I also made a history blog series on basic fashion history throughout all the eras on my WordPress. This is act two, and act two is gonna be covering the medieval era, or like the middle ages, and for me, I drew inspiration from the gothic medieval aesthetics and styles of that era. And I was combining it with a concept that I wanted to do in this act. Act two is called shadow work. And for all my spiritual baddies out there, if you know what shadow work is, it's essentially like a spiritual psychology concept of facing your dark side, your shadow side that you've suppressed inside of yourself. And for me, I assigned it to this act because I wanted to explore creatively what shadow work is like. And I came up with the concept of a light side and a dark side with my designs. So I made six cardigans in total and each cardigan is a pair. And each pair is a light side and a dark side that I want to explore while also drawing inspiration from gothic designs and medieval designs and exploring other concepts that I'll explain in this video. But before we dive in, I just want to preface this by saying that this is loosely inspired by every era that I'm covering in history, so it's not going to be like the most authentic or spot on design because I want to keep this as loosely inspired and creatively free. I am going based off of like concepts that I come up with myself. Just to let you guys know that it's not supposed to be like specifically a country or a culture or something like that it's always going to be like a little bit inspired by it but it follows the storyline and narrative that i want to put out with these concepts so yeah hopefully you enjoy the next six cardigans that i'm going to be diving into and explaining we are going to start with the dark side and for this one i named it violet nightmare enjoy this clip of a wincy adams dancing very iconic indeed I wanted this cardigan to design to be a classic granny square type of pattern because I already had in mind that I want to release patterns for this cardigan collection. So I started with a simple beginner friendly two in one granny square pattern. And the first one is called Violet Nightmare, which has these like granny squares and triangles arranged in like a diamond formation. So that's where the idea for this came from. And the color palette, I wanted to do like a purple cardigan for so long and I was inspired by the color palette of Wednesday Adams so I decided to choose the purples that I have mix it with black arrange it in this diamond formation that you see here for the front side and the back side so this is an example of how I set up the sleeves so for the squares you're gonna want two like this and so you're gonna have like a total of like 
these two squares back to back like that and then for the sides you want to have also these squares but you're going to be folding it in half and you're going to sew it to create the sides of the sleeves and you're going to have about six more of these squares for the sides that is going to be folded and then for this top part you're going to have two triangles to create the top part of the cylinder as i explained with the sleeves earlier this is how it looks like when it's all sewn together and this is how it looks like with the rib cuffing all of this is explained in my pdf pattern on my etsy shop and also a ribler shop that i have that explains how to create the ribbings attach the cardigans how to make the triangles and the squares and how to arrange it so i made a mistake and my sleeves are too long and now i have to take apart like a row of squares and fix it um i already sewed the other sleeve you see it looks long huh and now i have to like take it apart Here's me sewing the cardigan together. It's actually not as simple as sewing just squares. This one I had to sew in like a diagonal way just to get all the triangles and squares all sewn together. And here's the final results for the front side. I did this like lilac buttons with the black ribbing. I really liked how this turned out with the color palette because it's so purple and it's so like it gives me goth vibes and i feel like it would suit like the color palette of wednesday adams and his, this is the back side i love diamond formations of this it's classic i would do this cardigan again in different colors and i probably would block my squares and triangles a bit better because in the end i had to steam steam it just to get the yarn to loosen up a bit i forgot to take a video of the front side when it was hanged on a hanger to the wall so anyways here's me wearing it just to see how it looks like when worn i would redo this cardigan in like any type of color and yarn types a good pattern for beginners that want classic granny square cardigan but with a little twist to it something that they can have fun arranging different colors and different squares and triangles since I am following the shadow work concept of opposites, I have to have a light side to this dark cardigan that I just made. So this one is called Lilac Dreams, and I wanted to still keep in tune with the purple theme, except I wanted to have more playful pastel colors, and this is what I came up with. And I also wanted to make this pattern a two-in-one granny square pattern, so that the knowledge that you learn making a square can be arranged in a different way. This one, I didn't arrange it in a diamond formation, I arranged it in a regular square formation like this with the back side and ribbing and the front side i have just like two triangles for the front but the rest is like squares and this was supposed to teach beginners like granny squares in different ways of sewing them together that you can arrange it like like squares like this or you can arrange it like diamond formations and i want that to be the knowledge and takeaway from the pattern when people are trying to learn how to make a granny square cardigan for the sleeve it's quite simple it's just putting all the squares together it's a pretty big square so you just need like six of them and just sew them all together like this a cylinder and then you just work on the ribbing cuff at the end of one of the cylinders and as i explained earlier i did the ribbings for the sleeves i also did the middle ribbing for the front side as you can see here that's how i usually do my ribbings and i also have like a pattern for how to make the buttonholes Here's the front side, I went with the same lilac buttons and I wanted this cardigan to be oversized because yeah, it, it gives that like oversized feel and you can literally adjust the sizing, you can adjust how many colors you want and it's a very flexible pattern and I think it's like a very useful knowledge and skill to have when making cardigans because they all use the same stitching when it's when it comes to the ribbing here's the front side as a flat lay and here's the back side as a flat lay it's very it's very cute it's very dreamy i personally liked how this is like the the antithesis to the other cardigan here's me modeling and wearing it 
I just paired it with like just a simple white skirt and white tank top. The other one was like a black skirt just to show like yin and yang, dark side and light side concept that I was doing. Earlier before I released these cardigans, it was the summertime. So I was already like putting out a light side and a dark side concept already with my summer design, which I'll probably talk about later. But yeah, I like the oversized feel and fit of this. You're impossibly fast and strong. Your skin is pale white and ice cold. Your eyes change color, and sometimes you speak like, like you're from a different time. You never eat or drink anything. You don't go out in the sunlight. How old are you? Seventeen. How long have you been seventeen? A while. Tell me what you are. Say it out loud. Vampire. Now on to one of my favorite concepts. This one's called Gothic Vampire and I've wanted to make a vampire inspired cardigan for so long and this was like super duper fun for me. I knew the colors were going to be black with like a burgundy red or like a maroonish red and I knew that I was going to use this granny square called the Victorian Lattice granny square which you can like look up there's like several tutorials on that and that was just gonna be the cardigan it was just gonna be this square and i sew it together and have it turn into like a very oversized cardigan fit i just like the lace feel and look to it while also maintaining like the color and vibe of like a gothic vampire even though it's called a victorian lattice square which i know i'm well aware it's not like the same era however the design itself the laciness the detailed stitches it reminds me of gothic designs especially with the colors that i was working with and i totally would do this cardigan in a million different colors because it's so pretty anyways for the back side i did like 16 squares because it's pretty big like i had to stop like at like the fifth round and i was like oh okay like this is a really big square so i had to like stop there sew it together it looks so cool with like the lace holes then i add black ribbing at the bottom the front side the format is the same like my other cardigan it's just like seven squares with one triangle just so you can have like that dip around your neck and yeah the, i added ribbings to the bottom and then i was going to do the middle ribbing which tied this whole thing together and the sleeves was like the previous cardigan format it was just like six granny squares put together sewn together into a cylinder and added ribbings. You better hold on tight, spider monkey. And here's the front side of my vampire cardigan. How do you guys like this? It's so gothic vampire. That's all I can say. It just, it just gives me that classic vampire vibe and I love it because the red, it just reminds me of like vampire blood, blood moon and all that. I would love to continue to explore this design idea and concept because I have so many ideas I want to do but I have a limited amount of time and I need to start busting out these cardigans. Anyways, this is the back side. Pretty simple, pretty cool. I also have a pattern out for this and it's on my Etsy shop as a PDF pattern and also on my regular shop. It's I would say an advanced kind of pattern because you need to learn how to do different stitches for each square and it's like a lacy color change but other than that the format is pretty simple back side front side sleeves and it's an oversized cardigan so you can like adjust the sizing of that here's me wearing it and trying to model it yeah i would love to do a photo shoot in this during this time, I was really, really busy. I had like a lot of things going on in my personal life, so I didn't have many times to like shoot the, any concept pictures for the cardigan other than at my home, but this would have like ate if I shot this like around Halloween season outside. Nani? She's a runner, she's a track star. So I had to think about the opposite of vampires and what I came up with is like a holy angelic feel and I wanted to go for like a heavenly design and color palette which I went with a gold 
and a light cream color and i used the same victorian lattice square pattern except i just made it bigger and just did like four big squares for the front and back side and this was going to be a sweater for the sleeves i did a smaller square arranged in the six squares that i did before except i changed my mind the squares were big and i decided to just go with four instead which i had to scrap this like six squares earlier from this video and redo it i also added a collar and ribbings and it was a really fast and simple sweater to make i didn't really struggle because i already knew how to make the victorian lattice square once you get a hang of it you can just make it any size any color any arrangements just like in the sweater that i did originally i was gonna name this sweater angel or saint or heavenly but uh I just went with glory because you know gotta show the glory of god and i also wanted to keep it as vague as possible because i didn't um want it to be too on the nose with the name so you know i already have the whole concept out already so people can get a vibe for it oh can you see into my eyes like open doors all right, the last pair is called Memento Mori, and it's paired with M Memento Vivre, I think. I don't know how I'm pronouncing this, but I wanted to do a Memento Mori skull concept, and I made skull granny squares. And I also have a pattern out for this cardigan for the squares, which I released like around a little bit before Halloween, and I wanted everyone just to have like a Halloween type of crochet pattern that they can work with which you can find on my Etsy shop and my Ribbler shop. And this skull cardigan is pretty simple with like the arrangements. It's just like a checker arrangements with different colors. And the front side is the same thing. You just make a granny triangle with the checkered arrangements of the skulls and you just sew it together, add ribbings and granny square sleeves. The sleeves were just gonna be granny square sleeves. Here's how the front ribbing looks like. I also used the same lilac button for the front side and yeah to me it's like a simple checkered cardigan that I just wanted to do just to have like it fun for Halloween season so I previously made a Valentine's cardigan and a Christmas cardigan in the past and they were both checkered patterns so that's why I went with a checkered design for this Halloween cardigan and originally I just wanted to do this in like just black squares only but I needed to just give a little bit of like variety with the color work so that people can get an idea of how they want to make this cardigan in terms of a pattern since i already have like my holiday cardigans all in checkered but yeah here's me wearing it modeling it seeing how it looks like i cannot show this again live because it's been sold and the customer loved it and i got a cute little review with it which makes me really happy a good number of my cardigans that i made in this collection are ready to ship in one of one and it's just available on my shop as like a ready to ship item because i have a lot of cardigans and stuff in my storage and i just i just want to you know release it to the world have somebody get their hands on it so yeah you can check out my etsy shop if you want to see what kind of cardigans i have out there some have been sold already and some are just waiting to find its new home i went with memento mori as the name because it's latin for remember you must die and it's a philosophical spiritual concept of like remembering our own mortality in life which i think it's a great way to explain what this whole concept is the opposite design i'm gonna make is called memento vivre which is latin for remember you must live and i just want to end that on this note with this act because i think it's a great message of although we have you know one life and we are aware of our own mortality it's important to remember to live up this one life that we have and and my concept for this design is a sweater and I've always wanted to do a stained glass type of design so I did a stained glass window for a sweater and have it be in like different colors for each like row of the granny square and add it like 
like these little black stitches to make it look like it's a window and for the rest of the body i did like a navy blue granny square design for the sleeves and attached it sewing it all together to make this stained glass window sweater that had like a morning and evening kind of color to it like the back side is like lilac sky blue and this pastel green which is like the evening type of colors and then the other side is yellow pastel orange and a pink color for like a morning type of feel to the stained glass and i just think it's really cool i've always loved the artwork of stained glasses and i realized like okay how about i try to make a crochet version of that which came out pretty cool if i say so myself i like how the rest of the sweater is just one solid granny square color so it doesn't take away from the stained glass yeah this is how it looks like when worn me modeling it i think it's really cool and this ties up the whole concept of act two shadow work which i think sets a message of you know us thinking about our mortality how we view our lives how we interact with world and death and life and religious spiritual beliefs that we have in our personal relationship to that so i, I wanted to explore that concept here Anyways, hope you really enjoyed that. I have patterns for some of the cardigans and sweaters in this act, so you can check it out on my Etsy shop. You can also check out my Instagram to keep up to date with like what I have out. Hope you enjoyed that. Bye!